Let us pray. Gracious God, bless now the words of my lips and the meditations of our hearts. Breathe your spirit into us and grant that we may hear, and in hearing be led in the way you want us to go. Amen. When we were able to get the hymnal to play, Madeline yelled, Alleluia! Which reminds me of a story about a minister who purchased a new donkey for his cart. And he was told by the man who sold it to him that if he wants the donkey to go, he should say, praise the Lord. And if he wants the donkey to stop, he should say, amen. And things worked out just fine until he started going down a hill. And for the life of him, he could not remember what the command was to stop this mule, which was going faster and faster. He cried, stop. He yelled, halt. Nothing. And then finally he remembered, amen. And the donkey skidded to a halt just inches before it went over a cliff. Whew. The grateful minister said, praise the Lord. Okay, there are a lot of people who don't know how to live without excitement. We call them adrenaline junkies. Whether it comes from pleasure or crisis, it seems that they feed on stimulation, on activity, on doing things, on solving problems. And that time exists between one crisis and another that we call downtime. And for people like this, downtime can make them crazy. They can't just sit still and do nothing. And I suspect that for a lot of people over the course of the past eight weeks, as the downtime has continued to accumulate, as people remain in their homes, they're beginning to get antsy, they're beginning to get anxious. They're even beginning to get a little bit cranky and irritable. Even adrenaline junkies have a hard time with sitting still. I confess, I find myself wondering how so many of these people I saw in the news jammed elbow to elbow in long lines waiting to get into the now reopened gambling casinos were the same people who just a week or so ago were complaining about unemployment and about not having enough money. Now, I suppose it's an individual's choice to do what they want with the stimulus checks they've been given. But it strikes me as a little unusual to be taking some of that money and using it for gambling when it could be used for food, or to pay bills, or to help other people in need. Today's scripture from the book of Acts tells us how the disciples found themselves in downtime, how they found themselves facing a period in their lives where they had to simply wait for God's promise to come true. After the resurrection, Jesus visited with his disciples on many occasions. He taught them. He encouraged them. He commissioned them to carry out his ministry. I heard on a talk show this morning that we should be careful not to view the Gospels as the biography of Jesus. Because it isn't. If it is, it's missing an awful lot of details. No, the Gospels are the story of Jesus' ministry, of his action in God's name here on earth with God's children. And now that ministry is extended to the disciples. And he tells them that they're going to do even greater things than he did because he's ascending to the Father. And they will be scattering throughout the entire known world, sharing the message of Jesus, starting in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and 
and unto the ends of the earth. For many, waiting is a terrible thing. Ask any child shortly before his or her birthday or in the week or so before Christmas. But it doesn't have to be like that for us. Living in between times is an opportunity for growth and development. This is the in-between Sunday. Ascension Day was this past Thursday when we marked Jesus' return to heaven. And next Sunday will be the fulfillment of God's promise as we celebrate the festival of the Pentecost and the sharing of God's Holy Spirit with the church. But this can be a pause that refreshes, a pause that renews. God knows that we need periods of rest. God knows that we need periods of waiting periods where we can be changed, refreshed, or renewed. The prophet Isaiah says, those who wait on the Lord shall have their strength renewed. They shall mount up on wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31. In fact, that's even a song. And I'm going to share that song with you now. If you know the words, by all means, join me. comfort us when we're alone, and to be with us when we feel faint. As we deal with these in-between times, the first thing we can do to cope and to grow spiritually is to make them active times. I know for myself, when we first shut down our schools, I found it so tempting to sit around in my bathrobe all day and watch reruns of TV shows that I've seen countless times before. And I spent endless hours on my computer keeping up with important business, like updating my Facebook status. And I realized I was getting very tired and very depressed. One day just blended into another. And so I decided the best way to cope is to establish a routine for myself. I get up every morning at a certain time, and it's my wish that I go out and take a walk around the block. And so far I've been able to do that one day in a row <laughs> for two weeks now. One day in a row I get out and walk. Maybe this coming week I'll do it two days in a row. But then I come back, have my breakfast, 
Can I get busy? I have school things that I can be doing, classes I can be taking, training that I can attend. I stay in touch with my students and I communicate with members of this congregation. I have lunch at a certain time, I have supper at a certain time, and then I get to spend the evening relaxing with my bride. And I discovered that in doing so, I'm keeping my mind active. And by keeping my mind active, this in-between time from the way things used to be until we finally arrive at a new normal hasn't been that bad. As Christians, this is the in-between time. Jesus has left this earth and returned to heaven, but he has not yet returned here to take us home. And so we keep ourselves busy with prayer, with scripture reading, with Bible study, with devotions. Stay active. But then another way to deal with this downtime is to live as Christ lived. To live the way God wants us to live. Those early Christians, after Jesus ascended, they stayed together and they prayed and they worshipped. And they were in the temple praising God. Now we can't worship in our sanctuary right now, but we can worship. We can't be in the same room, but we can pray for one another. We can get on the phone and we can pray with somebody. Grace has a Wednesday evening 7 p.m. Bible study that we do on Zoom. I invite you to join us. We've been studying the Sermon on the Mount. This week we focus on not judging. Do you want the details? Check our Facebook page out. But be active. Live as God wants you to live. Show love and concern for other people. Be a witness. A witness is nothing more than someone who shares what he or she has experienced, what he or she has felt. You don't need to know a lot of Bible verses to do that. You don't need to be an expert in theology or any other fancyology. You just need to be able to say what God has done for you and what Jesus means for you. You know, you go online, you watch TV, and there are all kinds of gimmicks and quick ways that are advertised to improve your body and mind. 99 practical solutions for improving your marriage. How to create a bigger business. How to create a better church. My all-time favorite is one I see on the internet a lot. I get it in junk emails. Lose 50 pounds in two days. Oh, okay, I can cut off an arm or a leg <laughs> and lose 50 pounds in about two minutes. Those things don't work. The real solution for us in these in-between times lies not in gimmicks, but in God's Holy Spirit working in us and through us. Jesus promised that the Holy Spirit would come to us and would give us the power to be witnesses. Do you think it was easy for those early apostles to do what they did? No. It must have been incredibly difficult. But they did it because they had God's power. Our task in these in-between times is to face our fears and to witness. Now thankfully we don't have to worry about being thrown to the lions or being crucified, the worst that could happen is that somebody would laugh or tell us we're full of baloney. Well, so what? I believe what I believe. I'm sharing it because I hope you'll believe it too, but if not, that's your choice. I can just pray that God's Holy Spirit will touch your heart and minds also. A final way 
to keep busy and active during these down times is to have trust and confidence in God's promises. God has given us the assurance that he will always be with us, that we need never worry, that we need never fear. And we can count on that. We can believe God. Let's go back to that passage from Isaiah. Those who wait on the Lord shall have their strength renewed. They will mount up on wings as eagles. You ever watch an eagle fly? It's effortless. It just stretches out its wings and rides the air currents. If you're feeling tired, if you're feeling weary, then stretch out your wings and be lifted up on the currents of God's Holy Spirit. God will renew our strength. We shall run and not be weary. We shall walk and not faint. These are unconditional promises. Now, I'm going to go English teacher on you for a minute. You notice that the passage doesn't say they might renew their strength or maybe they'll walk and not faint. No. These are declarative statements. They shall run. They will walk and not faint. God will renew their strength. Those who wait for the Lord will receive these blessings. In these in-between times, it's a time for us to wait with God, to remember His resurrection and the promise of His Holy Spirit. Trust in the Lord. Believe in Him. For He's going to be with you. Amen. May the peace of God which passes all understanding Keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen.